Good morning to you all once again. Mamuka Sei, Livuke Njani. Thank you for joining this Peak Production Business Webinar. My name is Rollings and I am your moderator. And I'm also with Agribusiness Media. So here at Agribusiness Media, we are part of in, an international agribusiness information network, a network that's, that connects you farmers, agripreneurs, and value chain actors to opportunities that improve your businesses. And all this is at no cost to you, the, the farmer. So perhaps you might ask how we achieve this. Agribusiness Media publishes a monthly free agribusiness magazine, the popular agribusiness directory, then our agribusiness talk social media platforms. That's our Facebook page with over uh, close to 90,000 followers now and uh, on Twitter as well and uh, on WhatsApp with over 540 WhatsApp groups uh, for you farmers. So, and also this Agribusiness TV hosting these weekly webinars. So we will share links to all these platforms uh, later on in the chat section. So be sure to follow us on social media and also to subscribe on our agribusiness uh, television YouTube channel for more um, videos or farm uh, business uh, educational videos. So by the end of this webinar, you will learn how to start a pig business. You will understand uh, pig nutrition and also uh, health. And you also learn more about the market. And uh, you will be inspired by a success story from one of uh, successful women uh, farmers who, who is into uh, this piggery business. So we were discussing that by the end of the webinar, you learn how to start a piggery business and you uh, understand piggery nutrition and also health. And you also learn more about the market. What is the current price uh, of, of um, uh, pigs per kg and uh, how is the market demand? Then also we are going to inspire you uh, by a story uh, from one of the successful women pig farmers here in Zimbabwe. And you also have an opportunity to, to join a free pig production mentoring group, uh, which is a WhatsApp group. Uh, that will share a link at the end of uh, the, the presentations. So we believe all this will go a long way in transforming your farm uh, businesses. So also the, the mentoring group, it's a free WhatsApp uh, group uh, where you post your questions uh, and where more farm, uh, more pigger farm businesses will be uh, discussed. Uh, discussed. So in the interest of our time, uh, we will invite our first presenter. She's Mrs. Uh, Takayendesa. She's the deputy director of the Pig Industry Board in Zimbabwe. Uh, she's uh, very uh, experienced in this uh, piggery business, business and also the industry. Um, she will cover key areas on how to start pig production, the pig production models, uh, the economics of production, uh, selection of breeding stock and also uh, issues to do with uh, housing. So you can go for it, uh, Mrs. Uh, Takayende. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm from the Pig Industry Board. And uh, just a brief about Pig Industry Board. It's a Paris state under the Ministry of um, uh, Lands and Agriculture. And uh, we are mandated to do works on uh, pig production. So my business today is to talk uh, on issues uh, about starting a piggery. So yeah, I'll just uh, be running down what it takes to go into pig production, the preparations that you need to do, and uh, also the costing models. Can I have the next slide, please? 
So my presentation outline is uh, basically uh, issues uh, pertaining to starting a piggery, uh, where I'll be talking on uh, knowledge, housing, pig breeds, value addition, business models, costing model, and lastly, services offered by the pig industry board. Let's move on. So when one wants to go into pig production, uh, there are elements of uh, capital outlay because uh, this is uh, a business where you need really to, to plan well. So there is uh, some capital investments which you need to make on issues on housing to construct the pig size, you need some capital. Uh, to purchase all the requirements. Then uh, you need uh, to purchase breeding stock. You need uh, some feed, drugs. So this is very critical. Before you embark in production, you need to know that uh, you will be investing quite some money. And uh, the production model, which one will follow, will determine the amount of money which you require, and also on the scale of production. Because on the scale, like uh, depending on the capital, one might want to start with, say, uh, 10 pigs, uh, breeding females, 20, 100 or so. So it all depends on the monies which you have. Then there are issues of uh, knowledge. Uh, you can't really go into production without knowing what exactly you'll be doing. And we really place emphasis on that. Because even on constructing the housing, you need to know what type of house um, to construct, the sizes, the uh, plants, and so on. So this is critical. And also on the breed, what animal are you going to use uh, in your project? You also need to understand and have skills on production. So as the pig industry board, uh, we run courses uh, on, um, uh, on production. And uh, also, we have farmers coming, we receive farmers coming for general advice on their plants. So they, they can get also the housing plants, they can get the knowledge on the breeds and so on. Uh, housing depends on the head size, like uh, the number of pens you'd want to construct and uh, also the actual type of housing. I'll talk more on that when I'm um, uh, referring to the housing slides. Then uh, on the breeding stock, uh, breeding stock, you need to determine on the numbers to start with, again, depending on your capital, and where are you going to get the stock? Because you need quality stock for a business. Feeds, we need to appreciate that it accounts for 80 to 85% of the total production cost. So there is a way also proper planning is needed because a number of farmers underestimate as it relates to the quantity of the feed that one requires. I'm sure my colleague will touch more on that as we move on. Then water also is an essential nutrient in a pig garden, not only for drinking, but it's also required for, for cleaning. So there is need to have a reliable source of water when you are planning to go into pig production. Water can be from a bowl, from be from uh, dams, wells, or running rivers. But the essential thing is that the water is to be from a reliable source. Then on market outlets, uh, there is need to plan for marketing, even when we are planning to start the uh, production, because uh, it's uh, dangerous to start walking, looking for markets when the pigs are now ready for slaughter. You really need to have a plan in place where you'll be marketing your pigs and uh, the market has to be reliable and also uh, award um, viable prices. And generally distance is an issue. So you need also to look at markets which are in close proximity from your production place. Let's move on. Hello. 
Okay, on the knowledge, it's uh, critical to improve productivity. And in piggeries, we say productivity is the number of pigs that one can sell from one breeding female, which we call a sow per year. I repeat, number of pigs sold per sow per year. There are some determining factors like uh, how many piglets can a sow farrow at a time, live piglets, how many can be weaned and raised to market weight, and also how many times does that particular sow farrow per year. So if you are in good production, you are aiming at 20 and above. Some countries like the Netherlands, they are now producing around 30 pigs sold per sow per year. So the more you sell or the more you produce, the less your production costs will be because some of these costs like uh, maintaining the breeding head are fixed costs. Regardless of the number of pigs you sell, you still need to meet those costs. So we talk of efficiency and that's what we emphasize on. So a farmer really needs to know that they should be efficient in production. And to be efficient, you need to have the knowledge. And to have the knowledge, you need to undergo training. And PG Industry Board is at your service on that. There are a number of courses that are offered. So farmers and stockmen, we give emphasis that they need to be tra trained. You find that um, some time back, uh, farmers were sort of reluctant to come for these trainings, and they just wanted to empower their stockmen. But of late, so we are receiving quite some farmers who are wanting to be on the ground themselves, which is a good development because um, empowering a stockman, we can leave you anytime, or maybe you can come without full knowledge. So at least it's important for farmers to really know what they'll be doing. And the attention to detail is critical in a piggery. Besides training and uh, acquiring the skills, there is also a need for the correct attitude because there are instances whereby a farmer or a stockman really knows what should be done on the piggery, but for some reason, they don't do it. So the correct attitude is also very critical when one is in production. Let's move on. Okay, so on housing, as I alluded to earlier on, uh, the number of pens and also the design one is going to construct depends on the head size. We have uh, some basic plans for a farmer starting with a small head size of say 3, 5, 10, 15. There is a basic plan which we recommend uh, one can construct. Uh, I'll show you as we move on. Then also citing the piggery is also very critical. In pig production, land is uh, generally not a limiting factor because it's an intensive business. So uh, you don't really need a lot of land, but where you are going to be constructing, there is need also to, to think or to have a vision for the future. Like uh, when you want to expand, there should be enough space for expansion because it won't really be proper to have uh, pig pens dotted around uh, your farm uh, that will be uh, in turning to poor planning. Then as you construct your housing, uh, your pens should face north-south and not east-west direction because uh, this is done to really reduce the amount of sunlight that would be uh, in the pens during the day and later in the day. So they should face a uh, north-south direction. And uh, you need to have uh, strong walls uh, for the pens so that um, you avoid um, repairs time and again. So from the wet go, the walls should be strong and also the floors should not be that smooth uh, such that pigs will have problems in maybe uh, moving from one place to another. And uh, there's also a critical element of uh, ensuring that you provide 
adequate ventilation. So generally the pens are not built up to roof, roof level um, cause they need to have a, a good ventilation. Like uh, here in Zimbabwe, our temperatures are not that bad such that you need uh, enclosed housing. And uh, as you are constructing again, this need to have a proper slope for your pens. 3%, 4% slope is that uh, the, the recommendation. And uh, on the type of housing, um, these are uh, specialized plants and also basic plants. Uh, plants to this uh, housing can be uh, supplied uh, by the pig industry board. And uh, biosecurity also is a critical element. I think uh, my colleague will, will talk more on diseases uh, who, uh, I mean, who highlight uh, issues of biosecurity. But we recommend that um, a pig garden should also be fenced and uh, have uh, one entrance uh, to ensure adequate biosecurity. And uh, as you are constructing again your pens, issues of animal welfare have uh, to be considered and also staff welfare. Because uh, in some piggeries, you find that uh, they build their pens uh, uh, solo such that uh, the worker in the, the stockman uh, won't work, even work properly in the pens. And uh, some pens, they don't even put uh, doors for entrance. The stockman has to jump from one pen to another. That's just a recipe for disaster. And uh, when one is working in such an environment, it's an assurance that the work won't be properly handled. Um, then uh, my next one is just uh, some pictures to show you the, some of the pens uh, which are uh, on, uh, uh, on uh, farmers' units. We have uh, what we term the specialized dry cell housing, uh, which is uh, being shown by the picture above. Uh, these are uh, design pigs can stay in group in groups according to your head size. So, like uh, when you are starting a pig garden uh, during planning, you need to know how many pens I need to construct. And this information also can be uh, assisted uh, from the pig industry board. And uh, of not uh, doors, doors need to be strong because uh, pigs have a tendency to move around, destroy doors and so on. So you find that uh, from the visits which we make time and again in uh, producers units, some of the uh, door places are covered with drums and all sorts of material. Uh, I think from the word go, it would be good to construct uh, some strong doors. Then uh, floors can be solid or semi-slated. Uh, depending on the design which you want. And uh, it's also critical to note that in your housing uh, for the dry cells, dry cells are generally those which are either pregnant or uh, which are still open, uh, like those which have been weaned, but they have not been mated. Those are the dry cells. So in the housing, the bore should not stay with these females in the same pen, but it has to be in close proximity because it has been proven that sight, smell, sound, and conduct will also assist in making, I mean, uh, the sow to come on heat um, earlier after weaning. So it's important to have your bow close to the sow and the bow should stay in its own pen. So in the dry sow accommodation, room for the bow house is also created between some of the pens, because uh, it's important to note that one ball can work on 15 females. So in your consideration of the housing plants or uh, scale of production, you need to also know how many balls you'll be looking at. Then uh, the farrowing house is the next set of housing. Uh, and uh, of note is uh, the house is built up to roof level because there is need to ensure warmth Two microclimates should be created for the piglets, a warm environment and a cool environment for the sow. And uh, per pen, there is a space of about 6.2 square meters, uh, which can house the sow together with its piglets. And also, you need to note that 25% of the sows 
will, will be in the faring accommodation at a time. So say someone has got a scale uh, of 100 cells, you are looking at about 25 farrowing places. That should be enough for your production. Can we move on? Uh, some of the features in the farrowing pen, uh, there is a farrowing crate where the sow is uh, put in. This is to reduce incidences of crashing, which is one of the main causes of piglet mortality in the early stages of production. And also they use, need to have a creep area uh, where uh, it's a separate area for the piglets where they can uh, creep in and uh, lie in the area. You can have uh, biogas heaters like the one in the picture, or you can use infrared lamps. Uh, the idea is the piglets will head all together and also generate heat amongst themselves because the ideal temperature required is about 28 to 32 degrees Celsius, depending on the uh, age of the, of the piglets. So it's very critical to ensure that there is adequate warmth and also you reduce uh, crashing. Uh, you can uh, add also, there is need to have bedding either in the form of uh, hay, grass, hay, wheat straw, or wood shavings in the creep area. Uh, because uh, again, it aids on the war on uh, provision uh, of warmth. Because uh, chilling and uh, crashing uh, some of the main causes of piglet mortality before winning, which we term pre winning mortality. So, by all means, you need to reduce pre winning mortality because already it will have uh, a, a, a negative impact on productivity. Let's go ahead. Uh, pigs are weaned uh, at about 20 days uh, or 35 days, uh, depending on your uh, management. So in the winter pens, again, uh, there is need to have uh, adequate warmth and uh, temperatures recommended uh, around 22, 20 degrees Celsius. Again, depending on the weight of the winner, like uh, recently wind winners should uh, be provided with uh, an environment which is not different from what they were used to in the farrowing pen. And um, these uh, pigs will stay for a period of about uh, three to five weeks uh, in, the, in the winner pens. Cause uh, winners also, they are quite susceptible to stress uh, and um, stress factors can lead to diarrhea and uh, eventually pigs can also die. So to reduce uh, post-winning mortalities, uh, this environment is also, uh, is also critical. And uh, the pens are separated. Uh, we have the dunging area and also the, the lying area where also they will be uh, feeding. Let's move on. Uh, Multi-purpose pens. Uh, this uh, is the design I was um, talking to when I said uh, if someone is starting uh, with uh, on a small scale, uh, the one can just construct uh, pens with the, the same design, but used for different uh, purposes. They can be uh, for the dry cells. The bowl can stay also in its own pen, but with the same design. And uh, some pens can be demarcated for farrowing. Um, and as one grows uh, his business, uh, then uh, these uh, multi-purpose pens can still be used uh, for, for fattening. So that's also a way to, to start, especially for smallholder farmers. Can we move on? So in summary on housing, Basically, uh, that's uh, what's on the ground. And uh, plans to these pens, uh, you can also get in touch with the pig industry board. Uh, there are some plans and also a discussion or guidelines will be given as to how many you need to construct as per your plan. Then the other important uh, factor in starting a piggery is uh, knowing the breeds. Uh, on the breeds, you need uh, pigs which 
can enable you to sell more pigs to South Korea, uh, assuming that uh, other managerial aspects are all in order. So you need uh, uh, to consider issues of uh, like fertility, that is the potential to give birth to a large litter, and also the mothering ability of the particular pig. Because uh, we don't just uh, are interested in the number born live, but also or more so to the number which a sow will be able to win. Because after winning, then you also know that you have a big litter for market. So these are some of the considerations which you will be making when you are considering a breed to use. Uh, fast growth rate is also another element. Is the pig getting the right quality of feed? How much uh, can it grow in a day? It's also critical. Then there is also an issue of feed conversion efficiency, and uh, basically, which is uh, the number of, um, I mean, the amount of feed which uh, you need to give for it to gain a kg of meat. And there should also be carcass quality considerations because we should not forget the consumer who will determine whether to purchase your pork or not. Let's move on. Okay, so on the breeds, uh, basically we have um, uh, the breeds, I don't see the picture coming up, uh, maybe, maybe, okay. On the breeds, uh, we have uh, the large whites. Uh, in Zimbabwe, commonly, we have uh, large white, Landres, Jurok, and we have an indigenous breed called Nkota. So the large white is white in color, or you might want to call it pink in color, and it has erect ears. Uh, it's well known for its growth rate and also strong legs, because the breeding animal needs to have uh, strong legs, be it a bull or a female. Then uh, it also has a good reproductive uh, performance, like um, uh, on the over number of eggs it can release, so it can uh, uh, give a good litter size. Then it also has a very good mothering abilities, uh, but it's susceptible to, to sun them. So like uh, I alluded to earlier, the tents, the housing construction, if uh, you a in that, then if the large white is exposed to a lot of sunlight, it might have some, some sun bends. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the next breeding line is a land race. It's also white in color. It's a long pig and it has floppy pointing ears. Like uh, you can see the difference with the large white. Large white, the ears were erect. This one is floppy. And uh, it's uh, well known for its excellent mothering abilities. And it's a fatal pig. It produces high percentage of lean carcass meat. And uh, it is a good body conformation, like uh, being long. It means uh, its uh, teeth can be spread well on its body. Because when you are selecting a breeding animal, you also need to look at the number of teeth the pig will be having. Uh, good body conformation. And uh, uh, the limitation or the challenge with the pig is that uh, it has uh, weak legs and susceptible to stress. But um, if you manage it well, then still it's, it's also a very good pig. Uh, in very hot areas, at times we do not recommend uh, farmers to have a pure land race because of uh, the uh, stress susceptibility. But one can still manage it or you can have crosses of that breed. Let's move on. Uh, the Jurok now, it's a different color to the other pig. It's a brown, or some people call it golden brown colored breed with ears which are a bit droopy. Uh, it's well known for its growth rate and meat quality. Uh, has strong legs, it's a hardy breed. It's mainly used uh, for terminal, as a terminal sire in cross-breeding program, whereby you might uh, put the Jurok ball on the uh, female uh, white breed. Uh, you can have a very good litter size, or again, you can use the females as the, the mother side 
uh, with the white bread. So again, it's also another bread which uh, one can get uh, in this country. Let's go. Mukota, Mukota is an indigenous breed and um, it's mostly, we do not really recommend it for commercial production because um, it's, uh, it has poor growth rate and uh, generally produces uh, small litre sizes. But uh, we are currently sort of uh, uh, doing a research to try to improve the breed like mating with uh, other uh, exotic breeds uh, so that we assess uh, maybe we can come up with a good uh, uh, crossbreed from Mukota. Because the good thing about it is a hardy breed, and though it produces small litters, it has a good mothering ability. But again, it deposits a lot of uh, a lot of fat, uh, which is not really uh, needed by uh, these uh, by consumers per se. So yeah, basically those are the breeds which we have. We also have like uh, some uh, hybrids in the country. I think you have heard about Dan breeds. You have uh, heard about Dalan breeds. Uh, these are uh, breeds which um, were imported from uh, breeding companies in South Africa, and uh, they also have very good uh, growth rates and litter sizes. So this can also uh, be purchased uh, like uh, the parent stock and so on from um, uh, from Zimbabwe. And uh, like uh, last year, there was uh, a record whereby a farmer in Marondi, I think a number of us have read about it. Uh, uh, they produced uh, a sow, a Dalland large white cross produced uh, 31 piglets. Uh, uh, that was the liter size, 31 piglets. And uh, we just uh, spoke to the farmer uh, a few weeks ago. The same sow is produced also, uh, was it 22 or 25 piglets again? So the fertility is really, is really amazing. But also it's not just the fertility of the pig, but also the management that comes with it because a pig might be very fatal, but if it's mismanaged during breeding, then again, the results won't be good. Let's move on. Okay, uh, my next uh, presentation is on uh, value addition. Uh, value addition uh, in a pig garden, we get uh, outputs like uh, the breeding pigs, that is the live pigs, the breeding pigs and also slaughter stock that will be pigs, which you can sell as uh, pokers or baconers, depending on the weight. But uh, like currently, most farmers are producing pokers to market. Then uh, there is also slurry, which is uh, that uh, liquid which will be mixed with uh, with manure and also solid manure, which forms uh, the organic fertilizer. So on the outputs, uh, you can uh, have uh, breeding pigs for, for sale to other producers, or you can have the slaughter stock, which after slaughter will be sold as wool carcasses or as cuts. Like I think, you know, there are pork chops, there are uh, bright chops, there are leg chops, ribs, and so on. Different cuts arising from, from the, 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 the carcasses. Then you also have processed products like uh, sausages, bologna, salamis, or whole range uh, bacon of uh, other processed products. So those are the main outputs uh, from uh, value addition. Then slurry uh, from uh, piggeries can be used uh, for biogas production. Like uh, there are now quite a number of farmers who are going into biogas production because uh, you can use the gas to warm up your, 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 your farrowing pens, like in the creep area from that picture I've just shown you. That's actually a uh, gas from a biogas uh, digester. So one can have a biogas digester and produce gas for heating, produce gas for even cooking. There are biogas stoves which are now available. 
and uh, other farmers like uh, now I know of uh, two farmers who have um, gone a step ahead to even buy uh, biogas uh, uh, generators so that they also can feed in their uh, grid and produce uh, electricity. So that's uh, ways to reduce your cost of production at the end of the day. Uh, and uh, that's quite an interesting development. So again, this is uh, something which um, uh, is part of uh, the uh, value addition. And uh, fish farming again uh, can be uh, um, can be from uh, the slurry that is produced. Uh, farmers can actually uh, uh, construct fish ponds again to add value to from the manure. Let's go ahead. <coughs> So on the business models, um, I can point at three business models which are, uh, are from the pig business. There is a farrowing to finish. This is the most common form of production in Zimbabwe, whereby farmers just uh, purchase breeding stock and uh, they breed the pigs. Uh, they produce the piglets from piglets to winners, from winners, growers, growers, finishers, up to market. So most uh, farms or most producers uh, into this uh, business model, uh, into this business model. Um, then there is a second one which can be termed winner production. Uh, special, it's, uh, this will be someone who will be specializing in just producing winners. Uh, this is not being practiced per se in Zimbabwe, but in some uh, European countries like uh, the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, uh, we have uh, some farmers who just pro specialize in winner production. And uh, then lastly, there is a uh, fetener production, whereby farmers can buy in uh, winners for fetening. This is also uh, coming up in, in this country. But production of winners is just from those farmers who are still running their farrowing to finishing units, and maybe the extra winners they can also dispose. Uh, producing fetteners it's uh, easy because uh, there is not much uh, um, uh, uh, complicated management which comes with it, uh, is uh, compared to breeding, because here you are just buying. Uh, uh, pigs, which will be about eight weeks or 10 weeks of eggs, 18 kilograms, about 30 kgs. Then you will be fattening them, just ensuring that you give them the right feed, quantity, quality, and you monitor their health. And also you ensure that um, uh, they, they, they reach market weight uh, in the next 12 to, to 14 weeks. So this is also another form of uh, production, which uh, we like recommend if someone does not have really much knowledge on uh, on producing or on breeding, but uh, the limitation is that uh, uh, the winners again are not readily readily available. So on the business models, these are the three models that uh, can be um, taken up. But as I have highlighted, the first one is the most common one. Uh, a bit of uh, mathematics here. Uh, this is just a comparison between uh, one using uh, straight feeds, that is uh, the meals like creep meal, grower meal, sow meal, sow and bone meal. Or if one takes the route of using concentrates, whereby again, uh, normally creep, you just buy use the meals, then the grower finisher and the sow feed you also can now use concentrates to mix with meals. So uh, here there is a calculation. These are current feed prices uh, from uh, one feed company, a ton. A ton is 1,000 kgs. So like creep is costing about 86,880 ketan, dollars. Then grow finisher, sow and bore meal. And uh, proportionate use, that is, uh, assumption is if one wants to raise a pig to about 90 kgs life mass, 
assumption is that uh, you would need to give it about 11 kgs of creep. Then grower finisher, you give uh, about uh, 190 kgs. And uh, the sow portion, because uh, breeding stock, uh, it's a fixed cost. The cost for running the pig, uh, the breeding uh, stock is uh, again put on the on the growing stock. So per each pig marketed, you are looking at around 67 kgs uh, of uh, of uh, sow share. And uh, to the immediate left, these are the percentages like cream feed takes about 4.1 percent of the whole uh, quantities. Grower finisher 70.9 and sow feed 25 percent. So the blend feed price uh, is coming to about 62.39. And uh, dead weight feed conversion efficiency, like uh, how many kgs to gain a kilogram uh, of um, weight, we are working with about 4.14. But if you have efficient animals, it can be lower than that. Like uh, there are cases whereby it can be 3.84. But again, if your feed quality or if your genetics is not good, it might also be quite high, more than the 4.14. So there are a number of uh, uh, elements which come into uh, the, the final cost. So if we are assuming that you need about 4.14 uh, to have uh, uh, a kg of meat, you are looking at uh, spending feed cost to produce a kg of pork, it will be about 258. 0.29. This is uh, in uh, uh, bonds, and uh, we assume that uh, feed cost is about 85 percent of the total production cost. So, lastly, uh, it's like uh, you need 303.88 bond to per kg. That is uh, sort of the break-even price. So, this cost they help you in determining uh, how much uh, you uh, to get from the market, because if one offers any price less than this, then you'll be making losses in your business. But if you are offered also high, uh, higher figures, then you go home smiling because you know your break-even price is about $303. And uh, for the concentrates, uh, also, this is a, a scenario whereby uh, the concentrate prices are the current concentrate prices on the market and maize uh, cost maize at uh, the current uh, DMB price of 32,000 and added about 6,600 for million. I uh, was saying it's about 100 bond per, 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 I mean per, 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 per bucket. So it comes also to about 255,007 uh, cents. So what it means here is if you have your own maize uh, and you can um, uh, retain it on the farm, then it would be wise maybe to mix concentrates uh, with the maize rather than buying complete feed. So it's uh, a, up to a farmer's decision. Uh, in US dollars, I just uh, also had the calculation whereby in US dollars using straight meals, uh, it's uh, coming to about $2.43 to, to break even. That is the cost to produce one kg of pork. So like uh, year farmers uh, from some abattoirs, they are getting about $3 a kg. And uh, some farmers are uh, marketing on their own, they are getting about $4 a kg. So those are quite uh, reasonable, good prices. Let's move on. Hope you have understood the jargon. Right, then uh, assumptions to the workouts, I think I've already highlighted 11 kgs of creep. Creep is that first feed which you give to your piglets from about one week to about five weeks, uh, I mean to about eight weeks of, uh, of age. Then um, you can give creep up to about uh, five weeks. Then we have winner, winner feed. Uh, also, which you can give to your to your pigs. Uh, there is also the share sow I've already highlighted about 67 kgs of sow and bone meal consumed per pig marketed, uh, and uh, 190 kgs of grower finisher meal, and uh, 
assumption is that one is selling 18 pigs uh, per sow per year. But if you are selling more like 20, 24 or so, then it reduces your fixed cost and also your break-even price will come down. Then uh, on the feed, uh, assumption is about 85% of total cost will be for feed. So the 15% will be for other costs like uh, labor, drugs, and uh, some of the variables which we use on the farm. Let's move on. Right, then lastly, PIB is, uh, I briefly introduced, it's a parasitical and uh, uh, we are mandated to carry out research on feeds, advisory services, which can be on station or on farm. On station services is like uh, you have farmers coming in uh, at our two stations in Acturas along Mutoko Road, about 27 kilometers from Arare. Uh, then uh, we also have another station in Blueyo, about uh, 14 kilometers, uh, 15 kilometers before Blawayo along Harare Blawayo Road. So we are open, we are there for you, for your discussion on your plan, whether you are an aspiring producer or you are already into production, technical advice will be given. What we won't be able to give you is the money to start the project. Then uh, we also have uh, on-farm uh, visits where we have an extension department, uh, section from the technical department, whereby they go out uh, onto producers' farms. Like uh, yesterday, I think the officer was in uh, the Dreamba, not on area, giving farmers on-the-spot advice because there are issues whereby uh, you think uh, I'm doing the proper thing, maybe without adequate knowledge and skills, then if the officer arrives, he can have a different eye and he can assist you on the spot. So farmers are free, like uh, if they need an agent visit, they can organize with the officer and uh, maybe pick him up, drop him back. But if he has a visit to that area, then he can put you on his itinerary. Then also training is uh, one of the main arms uh, for the pig industry board, whereby we have uh, some uh, trainings on the station. We have practical trainings and uh, the aim will be to give uh, hands-on skills to the producer. There are some theoretical aspects covered. There are some um, uh, practicals, uh, emphasis, more emphasis on practical like uh, breeding, how is it done? How is the pig? How do you know that the pig is now ready for the ball? What signs do you see? They need to see the signs on the ground. Then also how the breeding is done. And with these new technologies again, we run an artificial insemination uh, lab and uh, we take semen, we inseminate the pigs. So again, during training, uh, the trainees also uh, practice on how to do the artificial insemination so that when they are back at their units, they can actually uh, uh, request for the semen uh, for a small fee, then they can, uh, then they are able to inseminate their pigs. Then uh, supply of breeding stock, like uh, we do supply live animals, uh, basically the breeds I have uh, highlighted uh, earlier, they can be available, but more on their crosses as well. Uh, demand currently, there is very high demand uh, for breeding stock, and um, farmers are, are, are ready to like uh, either start their piggeries or increase their production. Then apart from uh, live animals, we do supply semen, and uh, currently the semen is $5 per dose, um then you need uh, two doses for one uh for one for for one sow so if uh, farmers are interested in getting the semen they can always get in touch also with uh, the the breeding section or who uh who can supply the the semen then uh market information we also have an abattoir uh and the butchery on the station uh, whereby farmers again can um, uh, 
get or check as to what uh, prices will be prevailing before they make a decision maybe to, to, to sell their pigs. And also we offer a service slaughter facility to our farmers uh, who are in close proximity uh, for with PIB, like uh, those in Goromondi, uh, Goromondi district. We have farmers who normally uh, bring their pigs uh, for service slaughter. They would have identified the market and also they send in their pigs for uh, the, the request for that facility. Or a pig industry board, also we can uh, buy the farmers' pigs at an agreed uh, price. Last slide, I think. Next. So, yeah, basically that's uh, all I can say for you uh, today. And our contacts, uh, as you can see, we have the reception. That's the contact number, the technical department, Abatoa in Butchery. Then uh, also we, we, you can check us uh, on our website. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Kaindisa, for... Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Okay. Kaindisa, for the in-depth uh, presentation. Okay. I hope it was uh, really clear enough. Yes, it was very clear. Thank you very much. Okay. So to farmers, uh, the pig industry board is uh, at your service if you want to start the business of, uh, uh, of piggery. So please don't start without uh, adequate information. Uh, you can contact uh, the pig industry board uh, via the contacts that uh, we are currently showing on the screen and just a reminder to our farmers uh, listening that you, if you have any questions please type in the chat or comment section if you are watching on youtube on um, our facebook page uh, and if you are watching on uh, zoom please just type in the uh, chat section we'll be able to attend to your questions uh, later on so um, one of the key areas in pig production that you can't do without is uh, nutrition and also animal health. We now invite Dr. Maruzzi from Profits to help us on uh, nutrition and uh, health. Uh, Dr. Maruzzi, you can go for it. All right, um, uh, pleasant morning to you all. I hope you can hear me right. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Please carry on. All right. All right, super good. It's all good. Uh, my name is Dr. Karika Maruzzi. I'm the Profits Veterinarian. Today I'll be presenting more on um, uh, pig nutrition. Um, just to tell you a bit about ourselves as Profits, we are a predominantly a feed manufacturing company, uh, manufacturing a whole range of animal feeds. Uh, take it from uh, dog feed. Uh, cattle, goat, sheep, uh, feed, pig feed, fish feed, um, game feed, you name it. We are your feed manufacturers and we always uh, produce the performance uh, a feed. We also have Pro Farmer as our retail footprint across the country. We uh, have it having the one stop solution for you all farmers. If you are near any Pro Farmer shop, please do care to pass by and uh, satisfy your needs. Right, as I alluded to earlier on, I'm presenting on pig nutrition. And uh, before we indulge into uh, uh, nutrition, um, I would love to take you through a, a healthy digest digestive system, what it is and the benefits that come with it. So basically I am uh, going to um, try to make it as simple as possible, but if you have any questions, please uh, bring them on uh, at the end of uh, the presentations. Right, so uh, as for a healthy digestive system, um, basically it would allow you, I would say it's um, a, 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 the, the gut system, which is good microbes, right? Which is good bacteria that would allow uh, inhibition of uh, bad bacteria within the gut. It would also allow the normal well-being of a pig. So on its own as a gut system, it should be in a position to 
uh, operate on its own without interfering with other organs or together with other organs uh, to ensure the well-being of the pig. So in simple terms, this is um, a healthy gut system. So when a pig has a healthy gut system, it allows for good absorption of nutrients, uh, synthesis of other uh, uh, vitamins such as vitamins B and K, absorption of water. Uh, so basically it allows the pig to absorb um, the, the good nutrition that you give it, which is the feed that you give it. So in a healthy digestive system, we're going to have, as I alluded to earlier on, a higher population of symbiotic bacteria, which means the good bacteria population is on the high side. This will help to keep check uh, inflammatory processes within the gut. So it's quite key for us to have a healthy gut. It also has uh, immune system, positive immune system uh, benefits. And it also helps to prevent against uh, pathogens because the good bacteria, they always produce some proteins that are inhibitory uh, in their nature for um, um, the bad bacteria. Now, a gut that is healthy, it also has the ability to uh, have good motility. It allows expulsion of toxic substances and uh, to an extent also uh, disposal of, of, of uh, non-digested uh, nutrient uh, composition. And another thing is what we need to respect is um, the gut is uh, operates not on its own, it's not in isolation, but it's connected throughout the whole body through the uh, nervous system. So it's connected to the brain, the whole body through its nervous system. And if the gut is working well, it impacts on good behavior of the pig, improves on the appetite, stress tolerance. So all the good uh, um, aspects of uh, the pig that you would um, allude to as normal or good, these are also intertwined to this. As we progress, we would also love to have an overview of what feed quality, uh, what relationship is there between feed quality and, 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 and gut health. So we need to appreciate that a high quality feed uh, is feed that uh, would promote the symbiotic bacteria to grow. And if the population of symbiotic bacteria is on the high side, then it has an inhibitory effect on the bad bacteria, as I alluded to earlier on. So basically, all the good things that we're pointing to in the previous slides are recognized when we are uh, focusing on a high quality feed. However, when we uh, get to engage, when we get to use a low quality feed, there are challenges that we trigger. We trigger a cascade of events, right? Which would um, start from a rise in the population of bad bacteria. And these bacteria, they will worsen inflammatory uh, uh, processes that occur within or around the gut system. So by the end of the day, what we are going to end up seeing are some of the effects of poor uh, weights, high mortality of piglets or pigs, uh, diarrhea, and all, all the negative uh, pictures that are feed related uh, that we see within our uh, uh, piggeries. So having that background with us, I would love now to uh, indulge you in uh, explaining uh, pig nutrition using the uh, feed solution that we have at Profits. At Profits, we would love to start um, the, 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 the nutrition at the level of at the piglet stage. With piglets, we would love to say, we have them uh, given pig creep meal or pellets, and this feed should be introduced at least seven to 10 days um, uh, 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 from 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 birth, this pig is quite um, necessary or is quite good. It improves or supports the dam and also the the piglets. So what you need to understand again is the piglet has the ability to multiply or double its weight body weight each week for the first three weeks of its life. So this this would um, allow allow the dam to. To, to properly have milk to supply 
the, the piglets with adequate milk. And also even the nutrition uh, stress that comes also to the piglet should be satisfied also as the piglets has the, have the opportunity to take feed as and when they uh, want it. So we really need to appreciate that introduction of pig crib is quite key and uh, is very much uh, important. Pig crib meal is also uh, very much uh, important to support, especially first timer uh, sows or even mastitis cases that produce less milk. So it can also help uh, in this regard and improve the livability of, of the, uh, the, the pig litter. Because if we do not have the, the, the adequate, the adequate um, milk supply, again, it's going to impact negatively on the health status of, of the piglets. Right. So uh, basically, what I was saying is, uh, I was uh, on the trying to stress on the importance of uh, pig crib meal. Uh, now, from the pig crib meal, we would advocate for for, for introduction of a winner meal that is from um, around twenty nine days onwards to around fifty six days. At this stage, this is the stage where most farmers have some issues. And the reason or the question we should be asking each other is to why. What we need to really understand is when we look, we wind back and then check at the pig crib mill stage, you will find that um, at that particular stage, the piglets have an opportunity to have mother's milk. This mother's milk uh, is a lactate, and this lactate um, is in a position to lower the pH in the stomach to facilitate good digestion. So cases of indigestion under normal circumstances are at a minimum. But when you get to the winner stage, boom, we have removed the mother's milk. And then again, when we check, when, uh, we, when we are at the pig uh, milk phase, we're having these piglets uh, getting um, a warmth uh, from the crib area they that warmth sometimes some farmers they tend to forget about it and again it gives us a lot of problems it raises stress so when piglets are stressed it suppresses their appetite when they suppress the appetite it also uh, suppresses their immune system so by end of the day the high stress levels and the suppressed appetite will cause intermittent feeding patterns. This again will uh, now suppress the, the quality of the microbiome within the gut and hence the health status of the gut itself, then the subsequent problem that we start to have. So it's quite key that you introduce gradually this pigmina meal, then try to keep all the other conditions as to warm water feed uh, in, in good uh, uh, conditions. With some uh, farmers, you would find that they, they, they would uh, neglect all these uh, quite key uh, things. This gives us a lot of uh, problems. Now we will move uh, our attention to the grower meal, um, the grower meal or pig grower concentrate. Um, this particular meal is given um, around 57 days and to 112 days would uh, strongly encourage farmers that um, are blessed with the bumper harvest this uh, season to uh, make sure they use uh, a maize meal that's of quality. Don't use rotten maize, don't use mold maize. Just make sure the maize is, 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 is quite clean and, and good for, 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 for consumption, even for yourself. So take that maize, mill it, ensure two parts of concentrate to three parts of milled maize meal for this uh, grower meal. Remember to always introduce these feed phases um, over some time to minimize uh, gut uh, upsets. And another a meal or feed which would also uh, have at at at, um, at at profits is um, the finisher uh, pig finisher meal. We encourage farmers to use this pig finisher meal from around 113 days to 147 days, given at a feed allowance of around 2.4 to 2.8 kgs. With this particular uh, concentrate again or feed meal, you, if you are going to use a, a concentrate, uh, always remember that our concentrate in this regard 
to uh, pig uh, concentrates, they carry almost the same mixing ratios. That's two parts concentrate and uh, three parts milled maize. Um, remember to, to, to use that. And uh, the next meal that I'm going to talk of is, um, uh, I'm going to talk of the bow and sow meal. The bow and sow meal, this is breeding stock feed. Um, this meal, if used well, can be in a position to support your pigs uh, from the reproductive uh, stages to conception and until you have your piglets in, in the styes. So what you would really recommend is for you to have the boars given around 1.8 to 2 kgs per pig per day. This would support sperm production, good quality sperm even for breeding and also to support egg production uh, uh, in the sows. So they need to be given this uh, feed adequately and with boas, remember, they you used to use the upper limit. That is, if they are heavy boas or they are um, going to be having a, 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 a service pressure, which is on the high. And another issue that we need to remember is when we are feeding sows, remember to feed them around 1.8, 2.7 kgs. Uh, that is within the first trimester and about 2.3 2 to 3 kgs that's in the uh, third trimester. Um, these are the reasons. In the first trimester, we really want to support the uh, newly conceived piglets within the sow. So if you give them adequate feed, then you are going to support them. But sometimes some farmers, they have good service rates, and but then the piglets won't see the light uh, of the day because they would have died in between the conception and, 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 and the birth stage. So nutrition is quite key in this regard. Make sure that you give them uh, uh, this particular feed at this juncture. It also improves on, on our pro the prolific case of, of, of this house. At the last stage, we advocate on raising the amounts given to the sows. This is because we want to improve the quality and the quantity of the uh, cholesterol or the milk that's uh, given to, 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 to the newly born piglets. So remember this, uh, colostrum uh, confers passive immunity to the piglets and which also improves liveability. A lot of good quality milk also improves on uh, your winning weight, right? Another feed that you should also recognize we have is the lactating sow meal. With this particular meal, you need to really understand that it's the meal that's there to support uh, the lactating sow. So ensure that you give the sow about 2 kg per pig per day, but care to add around 0.5 kgs per piglet. This is uh, added gradually, and this is to ensure that the sow uh, does not go off feed and also continues to produce a, a quality a milk in uh, high volumes. Right. So basically, as we round off, what we really need to understand about uh, nutrition is ensure you give quality feed. Quality feed establishes a healthy gut. A healthy gut will ensure that there are decreased incidence of diarrhea, oxidative stress, and also even decreased need for antibiotics. Uh, I thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Maruti, for that great presentation and for covering the key issues to do with nutrition and health. So to our farmers, we have noticed that it seems our chat uh, is not working. So if you have questions, you may have to raise your hand during the question and answer session after all the presentation. So uh, Oganari from Women in Agriculture Union, WOW, is ready to share information on how their organization is working with pig farmers. She will also introduce one of uh, uh, WOW members for a success story. You can go for it, uh, Oganari. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Oganari uh, with the Women in Agriculture Union. As a, as a union, our role is uh, strengthening the capacity of 
women farmers to produce in the um, raw value chain, produce, process, packaging, branding, and marketing. And today here we are talking specifically on pig production. As a union, what we did, uh, we received um, piglets from through the ministry from Triple C, and we gave women the piglets. We also facilitated for women with the assistance of PIB to train the women on pig production. Uh, you hear from one of the farmers that we gave Fort Piglet to, uh, Ms. Nyagano. Um, wow, he has got a membership of about 6,000 women farmers now. And our role, as I mentioned earlier on, is strengthening the capacity of women in the whole value chain. Uh, the need for there to be wow was because uh, the role of women, as you may all know, already statistics, they show that women represent 70% of the labor force, and yet the role still remains either unrecognizable or undermined because there is no coordination uh, when it comes to women farmers. And that's where there was uh, a need for us to have uh, one voice, an umbrella union that coordinates uh, women for a united and national united approach for food and nutrition security. So I'm not gonna take uh, much time. I uh, would like, um, Gogonya Gano, we call it Gogonya Gano. We would like Gogonya Gano to uh, walk you through her journey with uh, WOW in pig production. Uh, she's one of our successful farmers. We have about, to date, we have about 53 women now that we have given uh, piglets to. And uh, Gogonya Gano is one of those that are walking the talk. So, Gogonya Gano, I think you can go ahead and click. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Um, my name is Mrs. Letwina Nyagano, known in our circles uh, in the pig industry uh, and in uh, women in agriculture circles is Gogonya Gano. I am 56 years old and I stay in Norton. Uh, in Ward 15, Table 2 District, Mashona Land Best. I'm an HR uh, practitioner by profession, but I'm a pig farmer by passion. I started very small six years ago with only three safe stores. I, I, I bought from a gentleman who could not handle it anymore. Without any knowledge, I struggled on trial and error for three years. I sent one of my helpers to PIB and after uh, two months later, he left for another employer. In uh, 2017, I accompanied our MP during his tour to Triple C, Norton. I was very inspired. When he requested the company to help the community with training, I did not think twice. I registered and paid for the training. I want to encourage uh, uh, fellow women in agriculture, that opportunities come in work suits. Don't ignore. You think it's, it's work, just grab it and go. This is what I did. Yeah, I'm, uh, I am um, 56 years, but I'm rubbing shoulders with the uh, most respected people in the uh, country just because of the pigs. Uh, 
Uh, I've got uh, on the market, I'm concentrating on providing the industry with winners. I win my business at 35 days and I sell. They are usually uh, booked before the 35 days. I have 30, uh, I've got uh, 37 sales now, and I've got three boards. I get an average of 13 piglets per saw, and I intend to increase my saw head to 50 by August. I do artificial insemination, and I treat my head on my own. I have three breeds. Landless, Giroc, and uh, large whites. I also have uh, four faro and crates, and I hope to increase to six by July. Um, I have uh, challenges anyway in our industry. The cost of drugs and the packaging. I think on the packaging, uh, most of the drugs are imported and they are packaged in such a way that those will benefit only the big players. For, for example, the for sure or the litter guard. The minimum you can get is uh, 50 mils. And uh, if you have uh, less than uh, 25 pigs, most of the time uh, the drug will expire. And the other challenge is the cost of ingredients. We also uh, have uh, the cost of maize, the cost of spare meal. This will compromise our uh, profit margin. But anyway, we thank God this year we had a bamba harvest. As Gogonya Gano, I prepare my own feed. Currently, I prepare for growers and boys. And so for creep, I'm buying straight feed. I have uh, maize, although it is, no, it is not enough. I have realized that if I prepare um, feed, I use about 326 US per ton. But from April this year, the cost is reduced because of the maize we have. Straight feed is about 500 per ton. So the advantage of uh, preparing my, my own feed is on the comparison of the 500 versus the 326. Advan uh, advantages of the project, of, of, the, of the project. I use my compost as fertilizers. I use my compost as feed for road runners. I have a lot of road runners. And uh, the Road Runners uh, Free Range Association is one of my uh, customers. I, I intend to have biogas too. By February next year, I would have embarked on fish farming. Gogonya Gano is one of the presidential uh, beneficiaries when they uh, distributed the piggeries from Triple uh, C. I got 40. I sold some and uh, built a, a block for my pigs. And I, I took five to uh, as breeding stock. Two months ago, I took some uh, piglets and I managed to uh, empower other ladies from our organization, Women in Agriculture Union. I thank the union for facilitating this facility. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Oganari and uh, Gogonya Gano. Uh, 
uh, quite an inspiring presentation there. Uh, well done, uh, Manyagano. Thank you very much. I see a number of requests here for uh, WAWU's contacts. Uh, Olga, uh, can you please share uh, your contact details? Thank you. Uh, 0712 008 054. Our email address is women farmers zim, plural women plural farmers as one word women farmers zim at gmail.com. I'll repeat that 0712-008-054 and womenfarmersim at gmail.com. Thank you so much again, Agribusiness, for this platform. And thank you, PIB, for the training. We continue learning from you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks again uh, for uh, that presentation. And their number again is 0712-008-054. So if you want to get in touch with uh, WOW, you can use uh, that number. Then um, our next uh, presentation is coming from uh, Sari, uh, Zimbabwe, and it's in the form of uh, a video. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rangana Zerumo, the National Sales and Marketing Manager for Sari Group. Uh, I want to take this opportunity and thank uh, Agribusiness Media for inviting me to this uh, uh, program uh, and uh, advise that uh, we are your partners, U.S. farmers. Uh, Sari Group is located 55 kilometers along Narayan Tari Road and currently we don't have um, a pig slaughter facilities for our farmers but we have an uh, abequa close to us which is about five kilometers away from us called Telisa Abequa. So what we are doing we are directing all the farmers to go with their pigs to Telisa to get them slaughtered. After slaughtered then we send our truck to collect then we, we weigh the, 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 the pokers. After weighing the pokers then we, 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 we pay the farmers. Currently, we are paying uh, $3.20 for super pokers called Dressmas. And uh, under pokers, we are not really interested at the moment. But as we go, we will see how best we can do and assist those who are the under pokers. We also hope to open to have facility for slaughters at our abattoir sometime before the end of the year. So that going forward, the farmers will bring their pigs direct to our abattoir and get them slaughtered at Sari. Uh, we have a distribution network across the country. We have depots in Marondera, uh, Harare Web 3, Bindura, Chinoy, Kadoma, Kwekwe, Kweri, Blawayo, Mashingo, Mutare. So our distribution network currently is quite um, uh, big and we hope we will continue to expand. So we encourage farmers to book with the Tilisa when they have the, the pigs for slaughter, then we, we take from them. Uh, our price also is determined by market force, uh, uh, supply versus demand. So the price will be up and down depending on, the, on those factors. Uh, any challenges, you can get hold of me or our production manager uh, by the name Joseph Nyashan. I will also give you the contacts if you need them. I think in that show, that is what I can share with you at the moment. Thank you all. Welcome to the Surrey Group, a proudly Zimbabwean company that has been bringing Crate Taste home for over 70 years. Over the years and through the generations, the small market gardening family farm has grown from its humble inception into a large integrated chicken and cattle agribusiness. We have combined our traditional core values with modern practice to provide quality goods and services to both producers and consumers. In addition to cattle and beef, we have a commercial crocodile farm. Surrey has also established the first commercial pecan orchard in the country. We have 55 hectares of productive trees and a vibrant pecan nursery. We are driving pecan production nationally, as we believe this will be a meaningful industry for the country. Recently, Surrey achieved its Food Safety System Certification 22,000 
an internationally recognized global food safety standard. This certification illustrates how Surrey adheres to world best practice standards. This certification is one example of Surrey's commitment to delivering quality, safe and affordable protein, the heart of every meal. Daily, we strive to consistently deliver the unforgettable taste of Surrey heartwarming brands being Surrey Huku, Surrey Meats and Surrey Deli. Our core values are quality defines us, we do things right, we are an open book, we work as a team. These are the values that underpin everything we do at Surrey. It is part of our culture that guides towards our vision, bringing great taste home. Over the years, our own family has grown and embraces many passionate, skilled and loyal staff members. We reach every corner of Zimbabwe with a comprehensive network of wholesale depots and a modern distribution fleet. The cold chain is respected at every point in the value chain. The one-stop protein depots offer a wide and comprehensive range of products to a cross-section of wholesale customers, from the street vendor to the largest multinational chain stores. We are customer focused and hence our daily commitment towards maintaining world-class health and safety standards. We are registered for export and ready to broaden our horizons in the region and further afield. We have made investments in clean and renewable energy such as solar. We embrace the sustainable strategies of many organic practices, also making significant contribution to reducing carbon dioxide levels through our ongoing expansion of commercial pecan orchards. While some fundamentals evolve and grow with the market, our commitment to delivering excellent service and quality products to the customer remain the same. That's why we are here and why we are here to stay. The Surrey Group. So now we are in, in our question and answer uh, session. So if you have any question, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for such an insightful uh, presentation. My question is to uh, the prophet's doctor. I just wanted to ask where you are saying that um, at a certain stage, you can then mix the feed with uh, maize meal. Can you substitute maize meal with maybe um, maize bran or wheat bran and rice bran? Any of those considering their, their price, they're a little, a little bit cheaper as compared to actual maize. Thank you. Very much for the question, Augustine. Thank you. Um, this is what I would encourage uh, to you. Uh, the best way to go over it, uh, I understand uh, due to the bumper harvest or season, we, we, we have had uh, a number of alternatives um, sometimes which we would want to include. But the best way to go about it is to visit um, uh, our offices or visit the nearest uh, feed manufacturing company and uh, get to explain to them on the alternatives that you would want to use and have them tested so that nutritionally you would also know who, uh, how do they fare such that you 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 be in a position to understand how much of each you should or you could add or how much uh, uh, of the mixes should be uh, in in the total mix of uh, the resulting uh, product so I, I wouldn't um, encourage you to do it blindly because there are dangers of uh, um, underfeeding or feeding um, uh, feed that is not complete. Or sometimes even we sometimes may have some sources, but uh, depending on, on their condition and composition, they may have even uh, anti-nutritional factors that may conflict with uh, uh, the concentrates or other uh, uh, additives within uh, uh, the concentrates such that by the end of the day, again, we do not complete the uh, um, nutrition or the complete nutrition uh, for the pigs. <laughs> Thank you.
they conduct their trainings? And also within this training, do they also train on how to extract the biogas? Because that's something that really interested me. Okay, um, thank you very much uh, for the question. And hello everyone once again. Uh, on the PIB trainings, uh, basically we have got, um, what I can say, three types in general. We have our tradition course, which is uh, the three-week practical course, whereby uh, farmers can um, come on the station, uh, they can reside at the station, and if one resides there, uh, they need to bring their own food, eating, cooking utensils, we enter protective clothing, basically a new pair of uh, either overalls or wetsuits and gum shoes. So this one normally is run every three weeks, but uh, for this year, um, we have uh, some NGO, which we are also running uh, the sort of the same type of course. So the places for other farmers, it's uh, a bit limited. I know there's a group coming in in May uh, next week. Then we have uh, the next one will be in August. And I think maybe before the end of the year, we can schedule for two more. But um, normally it's every three weeks we have a course ongoing. So you can always check uh, with us, like uh, if you contact the reception number for the next uh, I mean, uh, bookings. But uh, for August, I'm also meant to understand that it's already it's already full for those who would want to reside on the station. But if you have means and ways of coming sort of on a daily basis, then you can be accommodated. And um, that course is also flexible. That is the, the practical course. We have uh, some farmers who just say, I have maybe five days at my disposal or two weeks. You don't necessarily need to be there for the three week program, but the longer you stay also, the more exposed you become. So um, it's all up to the farmer. We are flexible as I've highlighted, and um, you can uh, want maybe to come in for five days or two weeks, we, we, we can uh, adjust on that. Then um, yeah, the current fee for the training, it's uh, 125. Uh, USD, regardless of whether you are being accommodated there or you are coming from your 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 place. So we have the three weeks, the five day, the two weeks, three weeks, five uh, two weeks, five days. They also have uh, their own fee. Then um, we have also what we term theoretical course, um, which is um, uh, a one day normally on a thematic uh, subject. Like uh, soon, we are planning to run one on basics for starters. So that one, uh, you can come in for one day and uh, it's a um, theory in nature. You, can, you meet other people who would want to go also into production. So if you are interested also, we are actually taking bookings for that course. We haven't come with the actual fee but it won't be that crazy. Then uh, on the biogas, uh, pig industry board, yes, we have uh, a biogas plant in place, but we are not expertise in that uh, biogas uh, development, uh, but we can um, share the contact numbers for a company which has been uh, doing quite some work. Actually, a group on biogas development. Maybe if uh, we can share your number, I can ask uh, the guys to put you also on the group. Uh, it's really moving fast, this uh, biogas, uh, bio, biogas development. And uh, there are also like uh, some um, storage beds whereby you can actually collect the gas and store it for, for further use. So maybe if you have much interest, uh, I can get your number and uh, I can always link with the people so that you are also on the group. My number is, uh, it's not on the contacts, but my number is 0772 890 for those who might be interested in personally getting in touch with me. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for answering that one. And um, whilst you are still there, Mrs. Takayendesa, uh, there's someone who is asking, are there any other branches of um, uh, the big industry board besides uh, the uh, actuaries one? Uh, there is one in Bluejo for the southern part of the country, but uh, the challenge is that we are not uh, like really decentralized to a very significant extent. So the Blawayo guys really cover areas like Blawayo, uh, Gwanda, that is the southern part of the country, and up here is, uh, is the northern part. But um, we also work well with uh, the extension staff agritechs uh, in the ministry, our parent ministry. So we really also at times run some train the trainer courses for these guys so that they can be able to disseminate uh, information like up to or down to what levels in their countries, in, I mean, in their areas uh, of work. Okay, uh, thank you for shedding uh, more light on that one. Then another question that we have, I think it is directed to Oganari. It's um, uh, what is the cost for membership or what is the cost of membership, uh, the cost to join uh, the Women in Agriculture uh, Union? Oh, no, uh, okay. Uh, membership is, open and free we have got general membership it's open and free for all women for them to join the union they have to fill in our form and submit either in the office or via the email that we gave earlier on to be members we have a cardholder facility but it is optional for those wanting to support the union okay thank you then elton zinyuke Thank you very much for the very informative um, meeting. Um, just uh, to request if we can get copies of the, of the um, presentations and also if we could have uh, uh, the lady who gave a number on to get uh, Miss, I think Chakayendesa to get her number. Uh, I missed it when, we, when, when she gave it. Okay, so Thank for you. Mrs. Uh, Chakayendesa, it's 890. 909, it's 0772-890-909. Then on the presentations, what we are going to do is, um, we have been recording this webinar and we will share, we will upload on our YouTube channel uh, and uh, share the links uh, later on. So because our chat uh, is not uh, uh, working, uh, we will give you this number and please do save and just send a high message on WhatsApp. Uh, this is our WhatsApp number for agribusiness media. And um, after you have sent a message, you will receive instructions on how you can join our free uh, WhatsApp groups. And uh, you can also send us your email addresses via that number uh, so that when um, uh, our webinar is ready or the recorded webinar is ready. We can always share a link uh, with you uh, for reference. So it's a 0774 121 76. 0774 121 76. So that's our uh, number is agribusiness media. So uh, be sure to send us a message and uh, we engage with you from there. Then another question that we have is for uh, Dr. Maruzzi. He's saying, uh, are there any outbreaks of uh, diseases uh, in pig production? All right, uh, it's, it's all good. Um, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, maybe Mr. Rendis, I can also interject even after, after, after this comment. Uh, as of currently, as of now, I'm not uh, well versed on, on, on outbreaks and as to where, if, if any, within uh, 
our, our, our national regions. But uh, yes, we sometimes have outbreaks, uh, for example, the African swine fever uh, outbreaks uh, that uh, once occurred some time ago. So it's also possible to have such outbreaks. And sometimes we also even have, it should be um, the, the, the foot and mouth. Uh, uh, diseases. So we, we have such outbreaks, but um, as of now, I'm not so sure if we are having a, a them or, or any other. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Marozzi. Uh, Mr. Kandesa, do you have uh, anything to add? Okay. Um, yes, uh, I agree with uh, the Currently, um, we do uh, outbreak uh, in the country, but as he has highlighted, the dangerous disease in pigs is uh, African swine fever, which if it's not controlled, it can wipe uh, the whole head because uh, it's, uh, it's a viral disease. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, there is no vaccine uh, for it. So the best uh, way is just to, to prevent that's why um, biosecurity and fences, fencing to recommended standards, it's uh, very critical because uh, the disease is carried by uh, wild pigs, that is uh, those wattles, and they are just carriers. They don't succumb to the disease. But if they get in contact with uh, the domesticated pigs, then uh, the domesticated pigs will get the disease and uh, it also spreads like, um, like wildfire. So during our training and also disease prevention and so on, we really place emphasis on issues uh, of fencing. And um, the, the veterinary department is also uh, quite fussy as to the issues on diseases. They do their surveillance time and again. Uh, and uh, if uh, there is any of that disease to not, uh, they quickly uh, make uh, us away. Uh, in South Africa, they are, it erupts time and again. So even if for people are importing their breeding stock, uh, they really need to go via the vet officials because uh, when the disease erupts, uh, the places are put in quarantine. I think in was it 2016, 2015, somewhere there, the disease erupted uh, 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 the, in Mozambique, uh, like uh, pigs just around and so on. So we're dying, and people buying uh, cheap uh, meat. And, uh, last year, I think it erupted a bit again close to Mozambique in the younger area. But um, we always try to ensure that uh, if the disease erupts, the veterinary department, they quickly act on it in place, even uh, roadblocks if need be. So at the moment, the country is Okay, uh, thank you uh, for answering uh, that one. Then we have uh, Serai Lukasi. Uh, your hand is up. Yeah, my question is mainly about the feeds for the pigs. Uh, we, I'm, okay, I'll say I'm facing challenges with the type of feeds. I don't know which uh, to go for because, uh, you know, sometimes you, you give them a grower finisher which is coming into one thing you see the growing rate is not that perfect uh, and if you give let's say if you buy five vet foods mm -hmm. you see there is which is a grower only or a finisher only you see a change you see some changes if you go to uh, national foods which is gains and other brands they're totally different. I don't know, uh, PIB, which feeds are you giving? Or is there any checks on the feeds we are being supplied in our country? Um, yeah, uh, thank you on that one. Uh, uh, it's quite uh, a tricky one. 
There are a lot of uh, feed companies, yes, uh, uh, who uh, produce uh, these uh, pig feeds like uh, profit is just presented, national feed, a, a, a whole lot are on the list. So on the qualities, I always tell these uh, feed companies that um, farmers are researchers in their own right. Like you have just uh, uh, said, uh, if a feed is not uh, performing for you, then there is no need maybe to continue using it. Uh, you 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 at liberty to to change the the company which you you buy from. Uh, when you are purchasing feed. Okay, I think we have lost. Uh... Uh, connection there, Mrs. Takaindi, sir. Uh, oh, another... uh, yes. Sorry, just just to 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 add on. I was going to add on even after. Uh, this is what we we recommend to farmers. As a farmer, please make sure that you try to choose uh, one particular feed type that you'd want to start with and. Uh, to 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 use in the course of production. That's the first uh, uh, important advice. And then the second thing is uh, with farming, it's part of an art and it's part of science. The only way you see the performance of a particular feed is to make sure you keep your records, check on parameters, and also when you're in doubt, get to hear for that particular feed nutritionally tested. But above all, what I believe is in, is uh, the pig themselves, they will tell you, because you will find that different management systems, they would love uh, sometimes uh, different uh, uh, feed regimes. So you will find that, uh, as you have alluded to earlier on and saying, sometimes we have some, that you have a grower finisher meal and not having it split into grower, they need to finish up. So, so you may find that if you may find you may find that um, if you are going to take on um, this particular uh, 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 multiple divided feed that you have many phases, maybe your management cannot take it or uh, uh, work on it then feel free also to 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 explore other uh, different feed regimes but at the end of it try to make use of your records and check to see how the feed uh, the feeds are, are performing uh, that's all i can say thank you okay uh, thank you uh, dr maruzi for uh, answering uh, that one then uh, someone with a device named b your and is up. Yes, thank you. Um, I've got two questions here. Um, one is to PIB. Um, I just want to find out whether you have any training literature available, um, which one can use for research um, when they're starting out, or whether you have any recommendations. Um, then the other one is for Gogonya Gano. Uh, who said that she averages um, 13 piglets in your winners. Um, so I just wanted to find out whether, um, how often do the pigs uh, breed? Okay, uh, thank you for that one. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Takayende, sir. Uh, so the question was, uh, do you have any literature on uh, uh, pig production that one can use for reference? Um, yes, uh, we, we have, uh, we have written a pig production manual, um, and, uh, also it has been translated into our local languages, uh, Shona and the Vele. So maybe if you're interested, you can always, uh, give a call, uh, at our place, then, um, you, you can have, uh, uh, that book for, 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 for a small fee. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then, Gokonya uh, Gano. Uh, okay. I said uh, I have an average of uh, 13 uh, piglets per so. 
In my case, I have 37, uh, I've got a, a 37 saw yet, and uh, the, the saws, uh, they give me um, at most 16, 17 piglets per time. And um, I have this three times a year. So for uh, to be to be on the safe side or to to be very fair to you, I put my average at 13 so that uh, the one can have 15, the one can have 14, one can have 17. So I always put my average at 13. And uh, I have uh, like in, in June, I have uh, about eight. I'm expecting uh, eight uh, uh, souls to give birth. In August, I have about seven. And in May now, I have, um, I think about 10. So I'm putting my average at 13. And I'm assured of winning all those. And I have customers ready for those. They are all booked because I keep my records. I know when I'm going to have the pigs and I know when I'm going to win the piglets. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and whilst you are still there, someone was asking for your contact. Are you at liberty to share your contact details? Yes, I'm free to share my contact. Um, uh, my number is 0772-4289. At zero. I'm stationed in Norton. Okay, uh, the number again, please. Zero seven seven two four two eight nine eight zero. Okay, it's, uh, it's thank on you. WhatsApp. Ah, okay, great. Thank you. Then, uh, Mwanza, your end is up. Thank you. So my question is directed to Olga. You talked about how you are giving free piglets to women. So I just wanted to find out um, the criteria that you use for to determine the beneficiaries and um, what are the requirements, if any, that you look at before you give the piglet. Thank you. Okay, uh, the piglets, the person program for the piglets, we are giving to women farmers that have got the capacity to look after the pigs. As I mentioned, it's a person program. So we give women that we, after assessment, we know they will be able to also give us back. For example, in the case of Mrs. Nyagano, she received 40 piglets, so we'll be expecting 40 piglets back to be passed on to the next farmers. And we are also giving to our cardholder members, like I mentioned earlier that we have a cardholder facility for accountability sake. Our cardholders are members that would have collected enough details and we can trace the program. So we are giving to our cardholder members and we Men that have got the pig size and the capacity to look at the pigs. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for for the uh, response. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone for joining this webinar uh, as agribusiness media. We would like to thank all our presenters for the in-depth presentations and uh, well-researched uh, content. And uh, Mrs. Ita Kaendesa from uh, the Pig Industry Board, the Deputy Director, we appreciate your uh, presentation and your participation in the webinar. Uh, Dr. Darikai Marutsi, a veterinarian with uh, profits, we thank you for uh, the presentation and Oganari, the chairperson of women uh, in Agriculture Union and Mrs. Nyagano, thank you for the uh, success story. Uh, then uh, Mr. Rangana is a woman, the National Sales and Marketing Manager of Sari Group. We appreciate your participation. 
Then to all our participants, thank you very much for joining the webinar and we hope you have benefited from the great presentations by uh, experts in the industry. So please do use the number that we have shared with you, the 0774-121-076 to uh, link up with us on our social media platforms. So we'll send you a link and um, uh, use that for instructions on how to join us. And remember it's free uh, and we'll post uh, more information on our upcoming webinars in uh, our groups. So from Agribusiness Media, I am Rollings. Enjoy your day. Thank you.